Welcome to Tesla Global, the home of the latest Tesla news. Today we take a look at Biden finally acknowledges Tesla, but don't blink or you'll miss it. Also, Tesla Megapack, auto bidder to be deployed in big battery project in Queensland and also, Apple's electric car project meets speed bump as key engineers leave for startups. Finally we look at Renault Zoe getting zero safety star rating. Let's get into the video. Biden finally acknowledges Tesla, but don't blink or you'll miss it. President Joe Biden is a self-proclaimed big car guy, but that has not stopped the 46th President of the United States from avoiding the word Tesla like the plague. Today, President Biden finally acknowledged Tesla, not with words but with a single photo of a Model X, which was exposed for a fraction of a second before being hidden by another picture of another electric vehicle. On Wednesday morning, Biden tweeted a short video clip of the history of automobiles, flashing photographs of American cars for a fraction of a second. The video shows the evolution of the American automotive sector from the beginning until present day. Interestingly, a Tesla Model X is visible in the video at the four-second mark, and it is the first time in Biden's nearly year-long reign in the White House, that he has acknowledged Tesla's existence. The tweet from Biden was promoting the Build Back Better plan, which promotes an increase in electric vehicle infrastructure, including state-sponsored subsidies and incentives that encourage consumers to choose electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are the future. With my Build Back Better Act and bipartisan infrastructure law, we're going to create jobs, boost manufacturing here in the U.S., and create consumer rebates for folks to buy American-made, union-made electric vehicles, Biden's tweet said. The tweet comes as a surprise to many Tesla enthusiasts and electric vehicle supporters, who are more than willing to admit that traditional OEMs and legacy automakers are only building EVs because of Tesla's influence on the market. Despite this, Biden and the entire administration have failed to acknowledge Tesla in any capacity, instead giving credit to General Motors and its CEO Mary Barra. It is fair to believe that Tesla does deserve more credit from President Biden than he has given. Biden has focused on companies that operate union facilities, and according to the Build Back Better plan, which has passed the House of Representatives and is in the Senate, will offer more money in its incentive program for vehicles built at union facilities. Tesla does not operate a union at its U.S. production facility in Fremont, California, and CEO Elon Musk has spoken openly in the past about his distaste for the union model. Earlier this year, Musk was ordered to delete a 2018 tweet that talked about unionization at its Fremont factory, according to a motion from the NLRB. The tweet is still published. Tesla Megapack, auto bidder to be deployed in big battery project in Queensland. Gen X Power has executed a revenue deal agreement with Tesla. According to the deal, Gen X Power will use the Autobidder platform for the Bouldercombe Battery Project, BBP, in Queensland, Australia. The BBP is a 50 MW 100 MW hours battery project near Rockhampton that utilizes Tesla Megapacks. In October, Gen X executed a supply agreement with Tesla for 40 Megapacks for the BBP. The Autobidder offtake agreement is with Tesla Motors Australia Proprietary Limited. Gen X Power entered into the deal to gain the minimum level of contracted revenues necessary to finance the project and retain the ability to capture revenue upside beyond a fixed guaranteed amount. The Bouldercombe Battery Project is set to be one of the first standalone large scale battery energy storage systems in Queensland. The unique integration of Tesla's Megapack battery technology and a revenue sharing arrangement utilizing Autobidder will reduce the complexity of the project. Importantly the structure of the agreement provides a minimum level of contracted revenues to support project funding, while allowing GenX to retain significant merchant upside, James Harding, GenX CEO, said. As part of the agreement, Tesla will provide a minimum level of contracted revenues to support the Bouldercombe Battery Project's financing for development. Tesla will also operate the BBP, using Autobidder to maximize revenues each year. The deal between GenX Power and Tesla will conclude after eight years. After this, Gen X will enter into a license agreement with Tesla to operate Autobidder on the BPP. The BBP project is expected to go online within the first half of 2023. Gen X plan to make all final investment decisions by the first quarter of 2022, explaining the recent revenue sharing deal with Tesla. Apple's electric car project meets speed bump as key engineers leave for startups. Apple's electric vehicle initiative has met yet another set of speed bumps, as the tech giant lost three important engineers who were working on the long-rumored project. The engineers who departed from Apple were hired by startups working on air taxis. The engineers include Eric Rogers, who was Apple's chief engineer for radar systems. Rogers was hired by air taxi startup Joby Aviation Incorporated Alex Clarabuck, 
who served as Apple's engineering manager for the long-rumored electric cars battery systems group, left for Archer Aviation, another air taxi company. Steven Spiteri, who worked as a hardware engineering manager at Apple, joined Clarabut on Archer. Both Joby Aviation Incorporated and Archer Aviation have confirmed the appointments of the former Apple engineers. Apple, for its part, is yet to issue a formal comment about the topic, as noted in a Bloomberg report. News of the Apple car have been swirling in the rumor mill for years, though more recently, reports have suggested that the tech giant is focusing its efforts on developing a full self-driving solution, similar to industry leaders such as Waymo and Tesla. Reports from Asia back in September also emerged suggesting that Apple was already looking to partner with traditional automakers and other vehicle suppliers as part of its efforts to bring its first F to market by 2024. However, the experiences of first movers like Tesla suggest that launching a vehicle and ramping its production is no small task. And with an exodus of talent, the vehicle's development could become more challenging. After all, Rogers, Clarabut, and Spiteri are only the latest departures from Apple. Six Apple car management team members left this year, including Doug Field, who was heading the project. Other members of the team have joined EV companies such as Rivian as well. Inasmuch as Apple is losing some of its key personnel and its electric vehicle program, the company is also aggressively hiring new talent. This year alone, Apple successfully hired a number of key talents, from Ehrlich Kronz, who previously led Canoe, a self-driving car startup, and C.J. Moore, who previously worked at Tesla as a self-driving software director. Renault Zoe received zero stars after latest round of EuroMCAP safety tests. The European New Car Assessment Program, EuroMCAP, recently gave the Renault Zoe a startling zero stars in its latest round of safety tests. The French automaker Zoe has been a popular electric vehicle in Europe throughout the years. As per the EuroMCAP's report, released in December 2021, the Renault Zoe received low scores across the board in categories including adult occupant, child occupant, vulnerable road users, and safety assist. The electric vehicle's highest score was 52% in the child occupant category, where it received 25.9 points in total. The Euroncap commented that the frontal offset test on a 10-year dummy indicated the Zoe provided poor protection around the neck while the head and chest were marginally protected. The breakdown for the Zoe's child occupant scores is listed below. 13.3 13.3 out of 24 points for crash test performance based on 6 and 10 year old children. 5.0 out of 13 points for safety features. 7.7 out of 12 points for CRS installation check. The Zoe scored the lowest in safety assist, receiving only 14% and a total of 2.2 points. The Euron cap noted that the car's seatbelt reminder system was standard for all seats, but it lacked a fatigue detection system. Lane assistance and the Zoe Zeeb system were optional and not included in the Euron CAPS assessment. The Zoe Safety Assist score was broken down into four categories, as seen below 1.2 out of 3 points in speed assistance, 1.0 out of 3 points in occupant status monitoring, 0 points in lane support, 0 points in EVE car to car. Renault said in a statement that the Zoe was a safe vehicle that met regulatory safety standards. These standards are constantly evolving and are becoming more and more strict in all areas, especially in terms of security, Renault stated. Renault is therefore continually improving its offer in order to comply with the regulations applicable where its vehicles are sold. The EuroCAP's ratings are regularly updated and are not used to certify vehicles for road use. However, European drivers keep the EuroCAP's ratings in mind when purchasing cars. As the advent of self-driving vehicles gets closer, it does seem that agencies like the Euron cap are getting stricter with safety ratings. As car technology advances, the way people evaluate vehicles and agencies needs to keep up with the times, along with manufacturers. Renault was once synonymous with safety, said Mikiel van Rottingen, the Euron cap secretary general. But these disappointing results for the Zoe and the Dacia Spring show that safety has now become collateral damage in the group's transition to electric cars. In his statement, Rottingen referred to another Renault electric vehicle, the Dacia Spring model, which also received poor safety ratings. Although the Dacia Spring did slightly better, receiving a one-star safety score in your own cap tests. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and if you are new why not subscribe? Thanks for watching.